What you're about to see is just an excerpt of a much longer live stream that I did over on the Snipe Life's YouTube channel alongside Brandon Robbins and Durbania. I would highly encourage you to go subscribe to all of their channels because they have amazing content, but stick around right now and catch this short excerpt. Along with storytelling, we had a lot of scriptural moments. Well, not a lot, but we had a few really good scriptural moments um, in this season. Um, so what are some of your favorite scriptural moments uh, from this season? My The favorite for me, and it's weird because it's scriptural and it's not at the same time, the, the healing of Jesse at the Pool of Bethesda. Hmm. That whole thing was interesting. And one of the things that I found really interesting was the exploration of what is the pool of Bethesda. Because, you know, you go into a new King James Bible and it includes those verses about an angel stirring up the water. You go into NIV and other translations and they take that out because it's not in the earliest manuscripts. So I thought that was very interesting approaching that the way the Chosen did, talking about the pagan history that was behind that. So that that's interesting thing, number one. But I, that scene in particular, like there's a lot of great scriptural moments in the chosen season two. And as you guys start saying yours, I'm gonna like, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> but this one hit me on a very, very personal level. It's, it's just a very powerful scene, how Jesse is just tied to this pool and, and he's kind of tied his identity to this pool. So he has no hope. He knows it's not gonna work, but he can't let it go. And then along comes Jesus saying, do you want to be healed. And so now he's reframing Jesse's mind. What did you come here for? Healing? Do you want to be healed? You know that won't work. That whole amazing conversation between Jesse and Jesus, it get I mean just this morning I was re-watching that scene. And I was I've seen it 50 times. I could quote it forwards and backwards and yet I'm still sitting there enthralled that the writing was brilliant, the performance was brilliant, but it's the message that comes out of telling Jesse's story and actually getting this visualization of a miracle that's kind of strange in the New Testament. And it's very short, but now we've really dived into this story. We're getting Jesse's history and we get the full impact of what this miracle could have meant back then, which of course leads to, again, like I said, my favorite, one of my favorite shots where Jesus is like, you got to stir up the waters. Like he could have waited a half an hour and Shabbat would have been over but he stirred up the waters. <laughs> and so Jesus. I just, I love that. And it's it just the whole tie-in with the episode. They thought an angel stirred up the waters. No, it's Jesus. He's stirring up the waters. <laughs> just not those waters. He's stirring up a different set of waters. But, and that scene just impacts me because it's Jesus encountering somebody in a difficult spot. My sister got a traumatic brain injury in a car accident about 13 years ago, changed all of our lives. And so- to be able to have moments like that where you can just relate to the pain that Jesse's going through and see Jesus's encounter with Jesse, it's, it, it gives you just this whole other perspective to some of those tough things that we really do face and go through in life. So for me and my family, that was a standout scene that has impacted us on a personal mm -hmm. level and on so many levels. I think there's two scriptures that really jump out to me. Um, one is, is obviously the Sermon on the Mount and just how creatively that was done and and how intimate that was. You know, it's so easy to imagine that moment is just Jesus standing and talking very generally and, you know, people might hear it this way or that way. But to see how it would connect with people on this very personal level with what they were going through and it, it just gives that a whole different spin. And, and I love how, like, I, I see a connection there too, just with that and Jesus sharing with them the Lord's Prayer. And that is one of those things that, you know, as, as I researched and I, I understood everything about how things worked with rabbis and students back then, like it's, it's this moment that every student would want to have with their rabbi of saying like, you know, we want to be you. We want to follow and, you know, catch the, the dust off of your feet. And so we want to do things how you do it. So teach us how to pray, right? Like show us how you would pray so we can pray that way. And I just think that gives gives those scriptures a new perspective where where now you you see it, you understand like this is what it means for us to be disciples, and you just begin to understand that prayer in a different way, something you may have said, you know, hundreds of times in your life. Yeah, I think my favorite one would have to be from episode one. 
And it's kind of funny because episode one, I'm pretty sure the entire episode is based off of like three verses in the Gospel of John where it says that they spent a few days in Samaria. And so that's already impressive enough that they crafted an entire episode off of that. But I think my favorite part's at the very end of the episode where you have the flash forward where it's, you know, John chapter one, but it's interspersed with Genesis one with Jesus reading it in the synagogue there. And I thought that was cool because uh, I don't know. First off, John, uh, the Gospel of John is one of my favorite gospel, uh, favorite books of the Bible, just in general. And about a year ago, I was leading uh, our college group through the Gospel of John. And it's funny, we're going through John chapter one, and I'm like, okay, we're like flipping back and forth between Genesis and John, uh, just reading them. Uh, and it's so cool because in the scene, you just get it portrayed so well, and you have the conversation between Jesus and John right before that, where. You know, they're talking about, is Jesus a man? And Jesus says, yes, I'm a man. And then John says, but, and then Jesus kind of considers it. And then he turns to him and says, I am who I am. And so it's like, that was already like, oh, that's so cool. And then you have John with this new revelation, like that Jesus is God. And then he gets to see Jesus, God in the flesh, standing there reading his own words out loud. And so John's just standing there listening to Jesus reciting the words, you know, like Genesis 1, like the things that started it all. And then you have that single tear that falls from John's eyes as it's going back and forth. And you have in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. And just the way all of that went together was just so well done that I, I remember I, I just had chills watching that with uh, the group that had gathered together with me to watch the premiere episode. And I just I absolutely love that scene. Well, I got to speak up now. Um, so um, mine's a little different because like I was on set for a lot of this too. So it's like I get kind of the double combination. Um, I would say one of the most sacred moments for me on, um, I would say season two was the delivery on the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and we're talking with Matthew and seeing that interact. And it, it was just very reverent. Um, and it was very, very um, powerful. Um, and I'm like, this is plausible that this could have happened because, you know, Jesus goes one-on-one -on -one and I could see this combination happening. Um, but what was interesting when we were shooting that, um, is, is I didn't know completely what Dallas was going to do. And if you see, uh, this is in uh, episode eight, about minute marker, 24 minutes, 20, uh, 24 minutes into it or so. Um, Jesus is starting the Beatitudes and he's overlooking. So he was actually in Utah overlooking Texas. That's the movie magic on that one. Um, but he was looking at the camp and um, I, I was in the editing room when uh, this, this occurred and Dallas didn't tell me what was, how, he, how he was able to do this, but the Beatitudes wrecked me. I cried like a little baby. I just <laughs> like seeing why he called the disciples. And I, even to this day, I just, I'll get, I'll get kind of choked up because every person had their place. Every person had their meaning. Um, not, there wasn't a time that he explained why they were called. He just says they're called, right? And there was a purpose for it, but it was beautifully done in a way that everyone had a place and everyone had to contribute. And the words that he said, this is a map of how to actually get to me, you know? And I'm like, wow, how powerful was that? And I was just in the editing room and, and Dallas is just like, looking at me the whole time. And I'm just crying like a baby. I'm like, man, this is good. I can't wait for people to see it. And he goes, that's all he does. He was like, okay, that's good. You know, but, um, that, that moment, even to this day, like when I, when I see it, it's just, Hey, you know, we all have a purpose. It might be small. It might be, you know, our own, in our own little way, but collectively we are the church collectively we're together and, and we're followers of Jesus and we all have a purpose. And so that meant a lot to me, a lot to me. And, um, I, I would say, um, the healing, uh, at, at the pool had a lot of meaning for me too. I have a brother that's paralyzed, been paralyzed since he's 16 and uh, to see him suffer. Um, you know, it, it, it's always, it's always hard. Um, and seeing how, how that happens. I, I remember calling him up. I'm saying, okay, David, <laughs> I go, just to let you know, you know, this is going to happen in, in, in episode four. It wrecked me and good luck on that one. And I, I talked to his wife too, but yeah, I, I think we all have different meanings of, of our own personal background of why this is important. But the, the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount just gave me context of how important that sermon was and is, and always will be. 
um, and the beatitudes of the the essence of the s simplicity of it, uh, but also the complexity of it as well. Yeah, and what I liked about the beatitudes thing is that I think I literally went through it, and every single one of the disciples has a moment in there. You know, there's yeah. not a single one who's left out. Uh, Judas, uh, and, and, but anyway, well, who's going yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Jews, but, maybe, maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah. All the ones who, all the ones who had been introduced, and we knew their names and stuff so far. Uh, they, they all had their moments, and I thought that was so cool because, like you're saying, it applies to us in the church. The church is a body. We each, we all have our parts. Uh, and that moment, like you're, like it wrecks me too. Uh, the moment I watched that, I was like, oh man, like I'm just gonna replay that again and again and again because. From a cinematic perspective, that was literally, that was on my list as well as one of my favorite scripture moments because fantastic, like just so well done. Well, I yeah. feel like it, it it takes the Beatitudes and personalizes them even more because, for instance, if you can relate to Nathaniel and you can relate to what Nathaniel went through, well, there he is right there as they're going through the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit and just to have that image brought up. So if you related to him in his journey and now you have this moment, it takes the Beatitudes and it just connects you to it on a whole nother level. And so that was just really cool for me to have the Beatitudes and to have those flashbacks to the different disciples and their different roles, because there were a couple of those stories that I really attached to. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I really attached to them and now here they are in the Beatitudes, I won't look at them in the Bible the same way ever again. Like I will have a more personal connection to it whenever I go through the Bible. Well, it kind of preaches a sermon a little bit because normally you'll have somebody, you have to stand at the pulpit and explain each beatitude for about 15 minutes right? Uh, before people understand it. <laughs> but now just in these like very brief scenes, you just watch it and you immediately understand what it means. Yep. You're like, okay, I get it now. And so that's just, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, my favorite scriptural moments are the moments that I can, um, in my videos, post the verse, verse by verse and follow it along, you know, for the yeah. next two or three minutes. And um, there's a couple of times in season one where that happens that I really love. And in season two, I think of um, the scenes with uh, Nathaniel. Um, and we're kind of looking through that and he's, he's having this conversation with Philip and you can kind of see the verses is, inspire, you know, these these um, conversations that go on. And of course there's, there's bits that are kind of uh, involved in between, but then we get to the scene with Nathaniel and Jesus at the end and, and just word for word, you know, I can read it in my scripture and follow along with the show kind of what's going on there. And I love Nathaniel, you know, just the way that he reacts to Christ because he's really the only disciple that's like, like gets it, you know, like you, like you are the Messiah, like you're the son of God, like that's who you are, you know, like it's this understanding that a lot of the other disciples just don't quite have. And so I think Nathaniel has kind of a leg up in that, in that area. And then um, I think again, just like you guys are saying the Sermon on the Mount and all of that, how we can just walk through and see how, how this is impactful. And I think the most impactful moment that, that, uh, you know, the show did for me was at the end of that, you know, Beatitudes moment where literally in the language of, of the script, right? The language of, of the, the scripture, it switches from blessed are you, blessed are those, right? Or blessed are those to blessed are you, right? And right at that moment on that last line, blessed are you who are reviled, right? And, and, and if for my namesake falsely, right? Um, he looks over at Matthew and there's this moment of like, oh, <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> Like that could be me. That could be Matthew. Like this big realization for him and for us of like, this is no longer not a personal thing. You know, this, this is personal. This is, this is for us. Um, so yeah, a lot of really cool scriptural moments in there. And, um, uh, you know, in, our, in one of our videos, we talked about how, um, maybe we can talk about this for a second, Daryl, but how, uh, in Luke, it has, uh, the, the man with the withered hand and, uh, they have the opposite hand. Um, <laughs> you know, is there a reason for that that you know of Daryl or <sighs> some things are cheaper to do the opposite hand. You got to blame it on the VFX guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like, um, and this is, this is something for everyone that hasn't done, uh, you know, TV production. There's a lot of moving parts and oh, yeah. there's a lot of things that go on and there's a lot of interpretations of everything. We just, we're just doing our very, very best, um, to, to get it right, you know, and, um, uh, some of it. Um, I do love the VFX on that. That was pretty cool. You know, <laughs> that was one Great. of the coolest things ever. Right. But I, I think the, the, the essence of it is, it's just like, there's, there's always something that's going to happen, but just remember it's the meaning behind it. I, yeah. I think that's the best thing. And I think that's the thing that we would like to portray for all the, 
all the fans that are out there and all the haters too. It's just like, we're really trying our best and you, you, there's no way in a million years we can get it ever right for every yeah. person in the world. We just can't, yeah. you know, and, uh, but we can actually make it look good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you read a verse, you sing a hymn, the money's in the plate. Sundays you mark out for him, but even then you show up late. You bought the shirt, you wear the cross, but sin throughout the week. Thirty shekels and a noose, you kiss him on the cheek. 